Prayer lays hold of things. Praise brings the victory. Amen. But here's something else that you need to know. Hallelujah. Victory. There is no victory in an atmosphere of negativity. There is no, if you got negativity going on, if, if the house is negative, if the atmosphere is negative, there is no victory uh, on your job. If you got, if everybody's on the job and you got, you got people, you got a boss and you got work environment and people are just, and there's no, there's, everybody's negative. There is no victory in an atmosphere of negativity. So, hey, what's that mean? It's, it's, it's time to get positive. It's time to get the praise going. Amen? Because that is going to bring the breakthrough. That's where the victory lies. Can you say amen? amen? All right. Well, let's go to the word. Amen. And everybody turn to your Bibles if you have one to Psalm 18. Uh, and uh, that back screen's not on, so I don't know if everything's out or what. I have no idea. There it is. Anyway, but um, Psalm 18, let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for enlightening us. Thank you that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Hearts that are open. Hearts that are open and receptive to you so that we'll receive and understand and grow and develop and be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word because it's in the doing that we have the success and the breakthrough and we give you thanks for it this morning in Jesus' name and everybody said amen. amen. We're going to continue this morning talking about moving forward. Everybody say moving forward. Now it takes effort to move forward. Uh, you know, we can't just lean upon God, just totally uh, not do anything and expect God to do something. There's the natural and the supernatural coming together that make an explosive force for God. But if we want to move forward, there's uh, things that we need to know, and we're going to continue to talk about the first key, or really you could say the best way to move forward is recognize the power of spiritual progress. Spiritual progress, if you'll do, do the Word, there's things in the Word that we do. If we'll implement these things, then your spiritual progress can never be hindered, and the spiritual progress will cause you to move forward. In the natural. Spiritual things affect the natural things. Psalm 18, verse 28 says, For thou wilt light my candle. Did you know your spirit, your can the candle he's referring to is your spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. And you need a strong spirit. A lot of times people have a weak spirit. And what is that? It works just like in the natural. If you feed your natural body, uh, you know, tw on Twinkies, you're not going to be very strong. You're going to be malnourished and deficient. Well, you can't, you can't survive spiritually. You've got to have the word of God. The Word is living and active, and it's spiritual food, so you've got to stay in the Word, all right? So he says, you, and in the Spirit, uh, Jesus said, my Word's your Spirit. So there's different ways of allowing the Spirit to light you. The Word will light you up. You get enough of it in you, and you'll start beginning to see some things. So he says, that will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. So we've already said, if you're going to move forward, you've got to have direction. You've got to have light. He will enlighten my darkness, for by thee I can run, by the, by the power of the Spirit, him enlightening me, him giving me direction, I can run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. Praise the Lord. Well, sometimes you see that people look like they hit the wall. You know anybody like that? You see anybody like that out in the world? These, I mean, right now, if you look at some people, it's like, man, they, are, they, they just keep running into the wall. But God, want, you can tell by the look on their face, all right? But uh, we should be able to look at your face and tell you're either, you're, you're going over the wall, you're expecting to go over the wall. Just any day now, that wall is not going to be there because we are moving forward. We are moving forward, hallelujah, through the madness, whatever is going on. Madness can simply be hitting that wall. We've already said that, you know, sometimes in life, it just seems like everybody encounters some dead ends along the way. And we talked about the children of Israel as an example. And I think they're a great example because the Bible teaches us to look at what they did and don't do what they did. I mean, there's some examples, lots of examples of the children of Israel that we are not to do. The Bible, New Testament says, look at them, look at how they acted, look at their attitude, look what they did, watch what happened to their heart, and don't do what they did. So we have examples that we are to look at and to not follow, all right? But uh, sometimes, you know, we hit those dead ends and things can be frustrating, we're looking at the natural, and we're trying, man, we're just believing God, and we are using our faith, and just because you're using faith doesn't mean everything's just going to automatically get rosy. Remember, the psalmist said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. You got to know that, hey, that's where I'm headed. Joseph, he didn't cry in the pit. He said, I'm headed to the palace. Yeah. All right, he kept his attitude, therefore victory could come. He wasn't allowing the negativity to get upon him. So sometimes we've done all that we know to do, and we're just trying to, you know, it's like I've talked about being at Ramah. I learned I had so many experiences at Ramah uh, when Donna and I took, you know, Bracken and 
Jess were our first two kids while we went along. We had Ben, our third, and while we're there. But one of the greatest, I mean, there was an ongoing situation that happened because I'm trying to believe for a good job while I'm going to school, and, and we are just surviving day to day. You know, there's just times that just life is just, if you're in a season where it's just, I'm just trusting God day by day by day, you know what? He won't fail you. But I was, I was in this point, I'm trying to believe God for a good job, and I won't go into the details, but I, I was believing to get on, a, I got an, a, an interview with Federal Express, and so I was believing to get on there, and so I really released my faith for that job and got an interview, and I was like, praise God, man, this is going to be my, my breakthrough, you know? And uh, for, so for several months, I would just thank God, you know, I just believed, it just got in my heart. I would start confessing. I was releasing my faith, and there are things that you can get with your faith. Did you know that? You can get with your faith. And so finally, I mean, this was like in the month of October, the first year. Finally, in May, well, right after that happened, let me back up. Right after that happened, the Gulf War broke out. Anybody remember? So that was back in 1990, the fall of night. Gulf War broke out. So everybody put on a hiring freeze. So uh, I would go by, you know, once a month or so, and they say, no, we're not hiring yet. I'd go by once a month, you know, keep going the next month. No, we're not hiring yet. So I'd finally go by. Well, then the month of May, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in uh, Holy Spirit class went towards the end of the school year, uh, just come out of an exaltation service. Keith, Brother Keith Moore was teaching on the Holy Spirit, one of my instructors. And right before class started, I mean, he's about to get started. And I'm sitting there, and the Holy Spirit spoke on the inside. And he said, I mean, just like clear, just on the inside, like a megaphone. It was like, you're going to get on at Federal Express. Well, I mean, I, you know, when that happens, you're thinking, oh, man, the next day. You're thinking, man, wow. So a long story short, it was the next November during Thanksgiving. I had just finally, they called me back in in the month of November. I got on. I was there one day. won't go through all the story. One day, then that second, first, second day on the job, they had to let me go. So I was, I was really frustrated. You know, I'm using my faith. I'm trying to figure this. So, man, it's like I hit a wall again. It's like you just, man, you're trying to do everything you know to do, and you're like, I finally, man, I was happy, man. I was like the guy at work that's just whistling while you work. Man, that first day, man, I was, I was moving packages, you know, had my gun, man, burr, burr, burr. and man, I was on this, and man, I was just having a, I was just like, God has fulfilled my prayers, you know, man, he, I use my faith. It took me a year. Come on, I mean, you could have some confidence that God spoke to you, and a year later, you were believing for a year. A lot of people can believe for two days. But a year, and I got on. Next day, you're off. <laughs> and now your head is spinning like, what is going on? You know. But here's the deal. God was up to something good. Don't ever forget, no matter what it looks like, how bad it looks, and I, man, and it was tough, but, I, but God had already been working behind the scenes even before I got that. I'd met a guy. Long story short, I ended up getting on monitoring security alarms the last six months. But there's a whole situation in it where you're just, you're just, you feel like it's dead end after dead end after dead end. But the last six months, everybody say the last six months. How many know the last six months was worth all of the year up before that was, but just waiting on God, trusting God. And there were just times all I could do was just, okay, Lord, it's day to day. So there are times that, you know, there are delays, but you know what? Let me put it like this. God's seeming inaction never means he's incapable. Sometimes we feel like, God, aren't you doing something? There are, what's going on? But it doesn't mean he's incapable or he's not, he doesn't care. Sometimes we think, well, God doesn't care. Why doesn't he, doesn't he care about me? Well, yeah, he cares. Remember the guys on the boat? And they said, Jesus, don't you care? And he rebukes the wind. He said, like, y'all could have, y'all could have rebuked this storm right here because you're about to drown. If it wasn't for me standing up rebuking this, you would have drowned because y'all are all crying and you could have rebuked this thing here. So... Even though you may look like you're stopped on the outside, nothing can stop your spiritual progress, all right? So you got to trust God. Say it again, he's up to something good. Come on, how many believe God's up to something good in your life? That was weak. Everybody ought to be, it ought to be unanimous on that. How many believe God is up to something good? Man, I'm telling you. What, so what if it takes a year? You just keep saying he's up to something good, and it'll pay off. And you'll be so glad because, I mean, what's the best kind of job you can have when you're going to school? When you can just sit and study and write through the New Testament and pray about what you're fixing to do in ministry? Come on. God's a good God. Remember, this is a walk of faith. So you can't go by how you feel. You can't go by what you see. All right? So spiritual activity is the most important activity there is, and that's what we're talking about. And we said, really, prayer and praising God. And if you think I had to just go and leave that one last week, I've got to talk to a little bit more about the praising part. 
Amen? Because this is important. Uh, don't ever let those negative circumstances rob you of your contentment and your progress. Remember we saw the Apostle Paul said, uh, in all these things, he said, I'm content. I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was in the context of finances. He's writing a partner letter to the Philippian church, and he says, no matter what's going on, I, I, when I don't have enough, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I have plenty, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You ought to go back and look at that again. It's important to understand that. Now, so if we're going to move through the madness, here was key number one, and I hadn't been able to get off of it, and it's taken me a little while to stretch this out, but it's important. Praising God in the dark times is one of the most effective ways to what? Turn our circumstances around to keep moving forward. Is you got to? Pray. That's what we're singing about, right? Just a minute ago, we got to praise God, praise Him. Praise becomes the breakthrough. My song becomes my triumph. Amen. And so to maintain joy, again, what is it that we know? Why are we praising? Because we know something about God's word. You got to maintain. Knowledge of God's word, because that word is going to give you joy. Now, go back to Acts 16, because we talked about this picture, this story last week, but I want to bounce off something here a little bit more. Acts chapter 16 is where Paul and Silas, if you look in the story, they're trying to figure out where they're supposed to go. God's directing them. The Holy Spirit won't let them go over here, won't let them go over here. Paul has a dream. He sees a man in Mass. on the wave and say, hey, come over here to us. So they say, okay, this is the will of God. So they get over there, but I want you to see this principle here. Verse 16, Acts 16, 16. Good way to remember this passage. Acts 16, 16, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us and brought us, brought her, who which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. In other words, she was telling them how to, she just, she had a spirit that was profiting these, her owners, that was operating and working through her. But I want you to notice it says, as we went to prayer. Now, I'm understanding, I'm coming from a standpoint, you understand the word and prayer are, first of all, very spiritual, and we're talking about spiritual progress and the enemy not stopping your spiritual progress, you got to pray. Prayer works. Everybody say, prayer works. Remember, Jesus said, pray, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it'll be open. So prayer is very important. So the place of prayer is a place of new beginnings. As we were going to prayer, there's a lot of things that happened, you know, Acts chapter 3, as we were going to prayer, that's when the man at the gate beautiful got healed. So things happen when people are doing, uh, are on their way to do spiritual things, and they're doing spiritual things. So the church was birthed out of a prayer meeting so that, uh, you know, at, I mean, up in the upper room, that's where the church was birthed, in a prayer meeting. What are we birthing in our lives? Things get started because you're praying. So that's an important key. Keep going. Verse 23 says, and when they had laid many stripes upon them. So they got thrown into prison. How many know they got thrown into prison? So, I mean, because they messed up these rich people's money supply, caused everything, and they're preaching the gospel, they get thrown, so they get thrown into prison. And it says here, when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Now, again, we said this before. That doesn't make you feel good, does it? When you, get, when you get beat, locked up, thrown into prison, that doesn't make you feel good. And this is where a lot of Christians stop. What happens is, I mean, think about it. These guys had every reason in the natural to get upset, frustrated, get angry, lose their joy. It looked like in the natural, their progress has stopped because we're trying to preach the gospel. We're doing what God told us to do, right? But verse 25, here's the key. And we mentioned it about midnight. Everybody say at midnight. I mean, that's, that's like it, some, that represents the roughest time. You're at the moment when, man, you just said, I, I've done all I can and I can't stand no more. Well, Paul said in Ephesians 6, haven't done all to stand, just keep standing. <laughs> Amen. But it says at midnight, Paul and Silas, what did they do? They prayed. First thing they did was they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the Bible says, and the prisoners heard them. So they weren't just doing all these, stuff. Lord, Lord, we don't, we don't want to interrupt. We don't want to offend anybody. Lord, we won't offend any of these other prisoners, so we're just going to stay kind of calm. No, it says the prisoners heard them. They're praying, 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 and they're singing. Hallelujah. Now, don't forget, they prayed for God to get them out of there, and then they sang. They said, well, we prayed. Now, what do you do? Well, you give thanks and you praise. So they prayed for God to get them out, then they sang. Now, here's what I want to take off from. Praise, because last week we kind of stopped right along these lines. 
Praise means to celebrate. Everybody say celebrate. celebrate. Now we forget about the importance and, and the importance of, of doing the word. And when God says praising becomes powerful, praise means to celebrate. Now, most of us know Romans 14, 17, it says, it says, for the kingdom of God. Look up here. It's not meat and drink. Talking about the kingdom. But it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Depending on the Holy Spirit, he's not really a ghost, he's a spirit. Amen. But the, right, the kingdom, what is the kingdom all about? It's righteousness, peace, and P, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom is a place of celebration. You can say it like this, it's a party. Heaven is a party. I mean, a marriage, supper of the Lamb, that's a party. I mean, things that we get to do. So the kingdom is a party, and God says if you want to, you want to get into the flow of the kingdom, you need to know how to celebrate. I mean, everybody likes a good celebration. I mean, we ta- I talked to you last week about the importance of how valuable, how important was praising and celebrating when I said we were building, adding on all this, auto, everything. You know, we come to a point where the finances just dried up, and, uh, and, and, and the word I got was says, have you celebrated? So we came back, we had a major celebration, drop balloons. I mean, I took time to do all, you know, but, but and then it's like, it, like it, it was so, it just opened things up in the spirit, and the finances begin to flow again. It's just, so there's something spiritual that takes place when we celebrate, when we begin to magnify God. It's amazing. And here's what I want you to understand. The devil wants to quiet down the church and take the party out of the people. Have you ever noticed kids? They, they, kids like to celebrate. They have no problem celebrating. And they don't care who's watching. <laughs> Amen. But the enemy wants to do that. Jubilee, Jesus actually declared himself as our jubilee. Jubilee means celebration. Jubilee was a party. Jesus restored it through the cross. And the devil wants to stop your progress and silence your praise. He's after your praise. He's after your progress. He knows, man, this is the quickest way that I can shut them down from moving forward in life, getting that breakthrough, shutting down their healing because they get their eyes off of God and they start complaining. They start wondering, thinking I'm not for them, starting doubting, and the negative environment shows up. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I I mean, we're in life. Life is real. And sometimes people come into church, they're all beat up, they're all beat down, and they're hurting, and they're in chains. But how many know he's the chain breaker? Hallelujah, he's the hard healer. Man, he knows how to do some things. And, and, and church should reflect heaven, and it should sound like a party when people come in here. I mean, listen, I don't know, you may be watching online. If your church, if you go to a church and it's deader than a hammer, I, I wouldn't go back. If it's, if it's, if it's so quiet, it, I mean, it looks like for the church of the first frozen. Man, there ought to be some life in church. I mean, the ushers are smiling. Guys in the parking lot got life lights going, you know, and praising God and children's ministry and youth ministry, and, and their life in the service. Now, I mean, there's a place for quiet. I don't mind being quiet and reverent. I mean, there's a place for that, but it should be a party. I mean, when you, I mean, you know, when family gets together, what do they do? Does everybody just sit around and look at each other? No, they want, to get the, they want to get some food out, you know, have some, have some ribs and barbecue and beans, you know, hey amen. Come on now, y'all getting hungry now, right? You know, get the tacos out, have a, have a big party, right? I mean, and celebrate. That's the way church should be. That's what Jesus wants. He says, I'm your jubilee. You need to celebrate. You need to thank God for the victory. Amen. Don't get all down and out. Paul and Silas, Silas took charge of their circumstances with their spiritual progress. They prayed and they praised and it was supernatural. They didn't let the prison get into them. They brought the praise into the prison. That's what you got to figure that out. No matter what's going on, all this madness, all this junk going on, people start, well, I don't think we need it. You just need it. You know, it's just time to praise God. Don't let the stuff get into you. Get the praise out. Fill your environment with heaven, the celebration of heaven, the goodness of God. Amen. Your situation, it might seem bad. It might be tough. You might come in here this morning with some bruises and some bumps, maybe some disappointments. Welcome to life. Amen. Here's one, but I got hurt in church. As if you didn't get hurt anywhere else. You ever heard people say, well, I got hurt in church. Well, listen, you get hurt everywhere. 
What's church got to do with it? Ain't nobody perfect in church. There's still people carnal in church, living carnal. Just because you're saved don't mean you just, with Jesus, like, ah. <laughs> Amen. Listen, hurt happens in life. When you were born, the first thing they did was slap you on the backside. <laughs> Welcome to life. <laughs> Amen. So the key to life is whether or not you let the hurt get in or you let the praise come out. That's, what it, that's where it is. You got to let the praise come out. So look at Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Let me wind this down. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Prisoners heard them. Think about that. I mean, they're probably, you, you ever think, sometimes when I'm reading stuff, I say, I wonder what they were singing. They're probably singing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. They're probably, I'm they're singing their hymns, singing something good. Amen. They're beat up, but they're singing. Can you sing while you beat up? Can you sing when everything seems hard? Can you sing when nobody seems to be agreeing with you? <laughs> it's harder than you think. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Now watch what happens. I want you to see something here. Come on now. It says, and suddenly. What caused the suddenly? The spiritual progress. The spiritual things that they were doing caused something to happen in the natural Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. In other words, while they're just lifting up a song, the song, my victory, the worship, they're just worshiping God. That becomes the warfare. God begins to do things, and he's working. All of a sudden, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison, I mean, listen, they're in the lowest part. They're in, I mean, they're like when you, put the, when, you, when you take the bad guys in, man, you want to lock them up, man. They're, they're down there. Amen. And suddenly, the prison was shaken, the foundations, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Everybody. I mean, it didn't just hit one jail, one door. It hit everybody's door. And all the doors flew open. That's a picture right there. I mean, the doors just flew open, and instead of running out, you know, the jailer's about to kill himself, and Paul said, hey, don't kill yourself. We're all here. It's cool. See, when you put your, here, here's the thing, why don't you get, when you put your prayers and your praise on the attention of someone who is higher and bigger and greater than your obstacle, your wall, whatever it is you're facing, something begins to happen. You begin to see. And this is going to set us up because I got one more point that I really want to get in. It might take me about three weeks to get it out. <laughs> Amen. But something begins to happen. Sometimes this is a when you praise, or even coming to church in, in your family, when you praise, sometimes it's for somebody else's chains to be broken. Everybody in there, their chains fell off. Doors flew open. Somebody else's miracle, somebody else's breakthrough might be dependent upon whether or not you're willing to go ahead and just put your flesh aside and praise God. Well, I'm, I know it's a little hard, but, but that's when you offer up the sacrifice of praise. I'm going to give God something that he's worthy of no matter how I feel. We always think of that like that, but it's your offering. Your praise is your offering to God. And amen. And it's important to do that. Amen. And it brings breakthrough. Some people need to get off the, the me time and get some he time. You know what I mean? He time. Well, I just I didn't need some me time. No, you need some he time. Get in his presence. Magnify him. Celebrate him. And when you start praising, things start shaking. Things will start shaking. Hallelujah. Notice the foundations were shaken. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm not just interested in a praise that shakes the room, but I want a praise that shakes the foundation. Man, just coming in here and just the roof starts rattling because people just lifting their voices and magnifying. Because when you start shaking the foundation, there's nothing left but the foundation of the kingdom. Amen. I'm going to have the band come back up here. Y'all come on up here because we're going to do a little praising this morning before we get out of here. But there's a sound that needs to be released. You have a sound that comes out of your belly that's not like anybody else's sound. It's a sound that connects with heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And that sound can be a new sound. It can be a new song. Hallelujah. And it's a song that ministers. It brings strength. It builds you. And it's just like comes out of your belly. Amen. It's a, it, it brings breakthrough. Hallelujah. So they took charge of their circumstances with spiritual progress. What was their spiritual progress? It's important to just run over it and go to something else, but you need to see this. They prayed and they praised. And it brought it and it moved them forward. 
listen, sometimes we're just, we just get stuck because the enemy, want, again, he wants to get us quiet. He wants to shut down the praise. He wants to take the party and the celebration out of your family, out of your life. He wants to take the party out of a church. No, he don't want any celebrations going on in the church, you know. That's why I mean at communion time, it ought to be itself. Man, it ought to be loud. It ought to be noisy. Only, only quiet time is a funeral, but really funerals ought to be noisy too. There ought to be some shouting parts in the funeral. Woo, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. We're going to rejoice. You made it. Amen. <laughs> See you soon. Amen. But remember, don't be caught doing nothing. To do nothing is the wrong thing. To do something is the right thing. What's the highest thing? To believe is the highest thing. What is, listen, to praise, to believe is to praise, is to rejoice, is to get happy. Now, you might think, well, I, well Pastor, I've been okay. I've been happy. I ain't been. Well, you can get happier. You can just choose to turn up the joy to get, you can hit joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. You got to get happy. Amen. I said, you got to get happy. James says, count it all joy. Have, have, do you have your joy this morning? Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through. Well, listen, we've all had our going through and you don't have some more going through because God's never going to take you to a place where you don't have some going through because you get to move forward and you got to understand these spiritual principles to move forward. Hallelujah. And know, first of all, that God is for you. Everybody say, he's for me. Remember that? If God, Paul said in Romans 8, if God be for me, who can be against me? Well, if nobody's against you, if, God, if nobody can shut you down, that means you must be moving forward. Right? I'm going to jump ahead and I'll get back to this next week. When, when they came to the Red Sea... And they got through, and finally, you know, they're murmuring, complaining, and God finally went, you know, Moses finally went to God. You remember what God told Moses? Anybody remember? <laughs> That's where I got the title here. You know what God told Moses? He said, shut up, stop crying, stop complaining, and move forward. Move forward. Everybody say, move forward. That's what he told him. He said, I mean, but, but you're just like, well, move forward. In other words, the way is in the sea. <laughs> and he, said, he said, raise that rod. You know, you got the picture. He said, lift up that rod. And so, I mean, he, he used that rod. He'd been using everything. That, and the children of Israel had seen all. I mean, God had done so much for them. But they get to this point. They're like, and, and God says, shut up, stop crying, and move forward. So that's your word this morning. Shut up, stop crying, move forward in a good way. You know what I mean? Don't be complaining. Just go ahead and move forward. Inch by inch. If you just, if you just, if all you can do is an inch, take it. Get it back. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up? Because I had this song on my heart, and it's really, it's just something that blessed me. And, and you'll see that this is what God is for you. And really, I just want you to really lay hold of that part. He's for me. Everybody say, He's for me. Come on, just sing this out if you know it. You might already know some of it. Go ahead. Come on. And keep you. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. I'm going to say, I receive. children and their children and their children may 
His favor yeah. be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you. He is in you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning. decision to follow and to serve Lord affects the next four generations down past you. How many like to just affect the generations after you? Hallelujah. The Lord's favor. Those who fear the Lord. His favor. Woo. Thank you, Lord. It's a bonus. It's for us. Right now, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I need God's forgiveness in my heart. Right now, I want to make that available for you. I want you to know God is available for you. His mercy is available for you right now. Just lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands to heaven. Just declare this out loud. Say, Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart, being the Lord, the Savior of my life. I choose to follow you. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. I thank you for choosing me. Now come live inside me. Change my life for your glory and your good. And may my generations be affected because of these important choice. The choice that I make to choose you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Salvation is a free gift. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're not ashamed to call upon the Lord. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. Come on, let's just sing that amen part one more time. Come on, just lift your voice. That's like amen, so be it. Come on, I receive it. Come on, say it out. Amen. Amen. Ah uh -huh. 
Lots of praise. Woo! Lots of praise. Lots of praise. Lillian B. Yeoman, in one of her little books, healing books, she talks about the praise cure. And she had a disease. She had prayed, she was believing God. But he showed her, he gave her a vision. He said, I, There's a scale. He showed her a scale. And there was a lot more emphasis on the situa- on the disease and on the problem, and it was weighting the scale down, so there was more weight there. And he said, if you'll praise me for the answer, praise me for the victory, you'll get it. So she just began to praise God, praise him, and she saw the scale tip as she's praising God. The weight tipped, and the disease lifted. She was totally healed. It's called the praise cure. Hallelujah. So now you know what to do. Say, when you don't know what to do, praise the Lord. Everybody say, praise the Lord. How often can you praise the Lord? At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David said in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you want a New Testament verse for that, Hebrews chapter 15, verse 13 says, Through him let us continually offer up. Let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks and praise. So thank Him, praise Him, and did you get something out of the message this morning? Get something out of the service this morning? Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to let you be dismissed. Thank God. Hallelujah. Uh, Just a little bit at a time. Just begin to escort out the back. Kind of keep your distance there. Hey, and don't forget, uh, next Sunday, if they release the social distancing, it's going to be just full out, church, so we won't have to worry about that. But if they're still doing that, we'll let you know. Um, but anyway, don't forget next Sunday, children's ministry in the youth building. Wednesday night, we're having service right here. So praise the Lord. We'll look forward to seeing you. And don't forget to stay tuned and uh, let us call us for your seat. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. You can be dismissed in orderly fashion. Praise the Lord.